All right, here we are. This is a KTM 350SX. This bike does not have a key, and I'm going to show you how to uh, make the throttle position sensor adjustment, TPS adjustment. Uh, this one, the throttle position sensor is hidden behind this, uh, behind this engine mount and behind a little cover. I'll show you how to get that out. Uh, tools you're gonna need for this. If you're using, if you're using our pigtail, I'm trying to see the camera here. If you're using our pigtail, you're gonna need your own voltmeter to go with the pigtail. If you're using our pro model, then that's all you need. Just the pro model and the, and the harness that comes with it. Okay, first thing to do is remove these three uh, bolts so you can take the engine mount off. These are T45 Torx bolts. Okay, that comes off. Okay, this is the engine breather. Uh, it's just in our way, no big deal. Just pull it out, get it out of the way. Okay, now this is the cover that the throttle position sensor is behind. We need to get that cover off, okay? You can see the frame, there's two screws that hold it, one here and one up here, one hidden behind the frame. And so what we're gonna do is loosen the throttle body and twist it a little bit, and then we're gonna be able to get to both screws. This is what you need your flat blade screwdriver for. There's a clamp on top here. There's another one, and on this bike, uh, when it came from the factory, the other clamp was on top. You can go through here to get to it. Uh, I've already spun it around to the other side. There you go. Okay, now the throttle body is loose. What you're gonna do next is take your Phillips screwdriver and pop this screw off the cover. Okay, now the next screw is a little tricky to get to, Oops, but not impossible. So what we're going to do is grab a hold of the throttle body, both sides, you're not going to do it hard. We're going to twist the throttle body, and that screw can be accessed through this hole if you're careful, through the bolt hole if you're careful. Now reach right through there, just a little bit more. There we go. Now reach through this bolt hole with your skinny screwdriver, and you're going to be able to access that screw. go. I dropped the screw, but this is the cover that was in the way. Okay. So now what you have here is a throttle position sensor, and this blue plug right here is the plug you need to remove. That's the one we're going to mess with. So now the next thing you're going to do is remove this plug, and that's what we're going to plug in. But to make it easier, we're going to straighten the throttle body back out again. So grab both sides and gently twist it. There we go. Okay, now grab a hold of this with your thumb, this tab, and the plug pulls right out. That's our plug. Okay, so take your pro meter and plug it right in place. There you go. Turn the meter on. There you go. Five, two, three, four. So that's this bike's uh, original setting. So write that down. If you get to messing with things, you want to go back to where you started, that's the number you go back to. Okay? Now, if you want to test the throttle position sensor itself to find out if it's bad or if it's faulty, what you're going to do is grab a hold of the throttle. Now watch the numbers. As I roll the throttle on, the numbers are going to smoothly increase all the way to full throttle. So there's full throttle. And I'm going to gradually go back down to idle. See the numbers go back down gradually. Okay, that's a good throttle position sensor. Now, if the throttle position sensor was bad, uh, that would jump, go to zero, it wouldn't be smooth, okay? The other question I get is about messing with the idle at the same time. I don't recommend messing with the idle at the same time you're, you're setting the throttle position sensor because changing the idle also changes the, the reading and you can confuse yourself. So it won't hurt anything, you're gonna confuse yourself. So watch, I'm going to grab a hold of the idle with my thumb. I'm just pressing on the idle. You can see the numbers changing. So. That's why you don't want to mess with the idle at the same time because it's going to, going to affect what you're doing. Okay, so what we're going to do is make a little adjustment. We're going to turn this one just a tad bit richer and see what happens. Five, two, three, nine. So I'm going to go up by 0.02. So I'm going to shoot for somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.54 or 5.43, somewhere in that range. And we'll give it a test ride and see, see how we like it. So I'm going to turn the throttle by just a little bit more again because I need to loosen 
the two screws on the throttle position sensor. There's one up here and one down here. These are, again, a T25 Torx. Now you're going to see why this thing is so crazy sensitive, why you need the meter and not just do it by sight, right? So now, can you see the numbers down here? I'm going to try and set this where you can also see it. Look, you just barely breathe on this thing and it moves, right? So you need to so five, two, four, eight. So five, three, so go. Go five, five, six. So I tighten that down. And you know what? I'm going to actually show you now how to do it with the uh, with the pigtail as well. So let me do that real quick. Take this off of here. I realize I probably just moved the sensor all over the place since it's unscrewed. So when you're working with the pigtail, notice there's two plugs. You're going to put one in the throttle position sensor itself, okay, and one in the bike. Here's the bike's plug. So you're going to plug it into the bike. Now that's going to use the five volts from the bike. Now there's two different types of voltmeters. There's auto ranging and there's manual. With the auto ranging, such as the Fluke, you're going to look for uh, DC volts, which is usually a V with solid and dotted line over it. Okay, the squiggly line means AC. You want to be on DC. All right, come on camera. There we go. So I'm going to turn to DC volts. If you're using a manual meter, such as this one, so you're going to shoot for here, it's uh, DC. Look for DC volts, and here's two volts. So two would give me a good range. Um, 20 will work on, you know, on most meters, but it's not going to give you as much resolution. And if you have something like millivolts, 200 millivolts, that's too small. It's going to be over range. So two volts is ideal. Okay, so let's set this guy up. Oops. All right. So you're going to look at your harness here. You've got a, a red, green, and a black. Real easy. You're going to take the black wire, black probe from your meter, put it in the black wire from the harness black on black and take the red from your meter and put it in the red from the harness red on red okay i'm going to put my meter on dc volts you notice i've got a big fat zero is because nothing is powered right now so with the fuel injected bikes uh, that do not have a key if you had a key you turn the key on turn the bike on this thing would power up and be on all day um, for a non-keyed bike what you're going to do is bump the start button and that'll give you about eight seconds of power so here, don't start it. Well, you can, it won't hurt anything, but there you go. So you see, I get about eight seconds of power and you know, God knows where it is because I was bumping it all around. So it works, it works just fine, but you get eight seconds at a time. And since I'm, uh, since I have the pro meter here, I'm going to use it because that's going to be a lot easier to, to take my time and get zoomed in on the number I want to. Do I say we're shooting for for five four three right? So let's shoot four five six five. Whoa! Very very sensitive five. There it is. So now it's going to move a little probably when you tighten it. Five four seven. Okay, there we go. Five four seven is really close to five four three. It's only a couple thousandths off. Um, so there you go. We're going to take it out, give it a quick test ride. If it's better. We're going to come back and do it again. We're going to bump it up a little bit more. And you keep bumping it up as long as it's better. If it's worse, you just come back and turn it down and, and keep doing that as long as it gets better. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, now I unplug everything, put it all back the way it was. Uh, I know with the KTM, they say use, uh, use Loctite on thread locker on these bolts. So uh, if your bike, you know, whatever your bike is, check the manual, see what they say. Um, but that's the long and short of it, uh, of how to make the adjustments. Real easy. And, uh, and off you go. I will post a, a another, uh, another video below that shows how to do it with a keyed bike and a bike that doesn't have this uh, frame, the engine mount here, which is a lot easier. Um, so look for that in just a minute. I'll put the links below. Thank you very much.